Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Tactics Live episode 36. It's been a while since we've been on together. Um, it's been about a month, but we've certainly been busy in September. Uh, we had PCA's open house. We had Sports Car Together Fest in Indy, in Indy um, as well as we dropped a few videos. So even though we didn't have Tech Tactics Live, I hope you enjoyed watching the video on the 904. You got to see us taking delivery of an air-cooled Porsche at PEC Atlanta. And then also the recent review that Damon did on the 2021 Panamera GTS. So with that, welcome back to PCA's Garage. Tonight, episode 36, we're talking about aftermarket seats for your Porsche. But before we get into it, I want to remind you to please like, subscribe, and comment. And uh, for those of you that are watching live tonight, make sure you put your name and where you're from in the live chat area because we have some great raffle prizes for you. Uh, tonight we have a Metropolitan, a Metrovac Evolution Handvac. That's going to go to a lucky winner and then we have one of the coveted sports car together fest pca posters uh, and a water bottle that'll go to a winner i want to thank pirelli for their sponsorship of the whole tech tactics live series and tonight i want to thank race tech for sponsoring tonight's episode so what's to look for when you're going for an aftermarket seat for your porsche and i thought i would bring my friend of 20 some years uh, i've been to his place with videos and and um you've seen him before i think in, in some of our uh, videos that we've done at tpc racing tom chan if you would join us here so tom and i like i said we go back 20 some years when i think it was my first phone call to him when I had my um, 87 911, I was looking for an aftermarket exhaust and he pointed to me in a, in a direction that was very interesting because you said, don't worry about that right now. Enjoy the car and learn how to drive it. And that's what I did for the first year and a half. And so he was very honest and I, I, I always appreciated that. So we've had kind of built that relationship um, since then and, and TPC, uh, Mike Levitas, Tom, they are, just a wealth of information, especially when it comes to performance driving or setting up your car for performance driving. So that's why I thought it would be perfect to have him as our expert for tonight to talking about picking your aftermarket seat for your Porsche. So let's go through tonight's agenda. Uh, let me ask Robert to throw that up there. We're gonna talk about why would you wanna change your seat in your Porsche? Where to buy these seats? what seat you should buy, what's involved in installing an aftermarket seat, especially in modern cars. And then we're gonna talk about the safety system, the harness, the roll bar, the head and neck restraint system. So there's a lot that goes into upgrading or changing your, um, your seat to an aftermarket seat. And I think a good way to start is to bring Damon. We all know Damon, we all know his 07 Cayman. We all know that he's building this car to uh, gain a few seconds uh, on an autocross course so that he can beat me. Um, right now he's ahead of me by maybe occasionally half a second. But uh, more recently he did upgrade his car to aftermarket seats. So I'm just gonna, excuse me Tom, I'm gonna walk around and maybe you'll join me as well. Sure. So Damon, why did you put aftermarket seats in your car? Uh, well, I'm an avid autocrosser, so I figured that it would give me better support while I was autocrossing, wouldn't move around as much, and uh, at some point next year, this will also turn into a track car, so uh, I knew that the stock seats just wouldn't do it if I wanted to have a harness bar and a harness, and, uh, all the proper safety items that I needed for doing those sorts of activities. So we're just checking the camera here. What was the process? for you to choose, acquire, install, roughly. <laughs> uh, well, and, I probably, and I kind of smile when I say that because the way he did it is probably not going to be the way that we suggest you do it yeah, tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I really wanted a, a set of seats and I probably did all the wrong things to go about it. Um, I ended up looking uh, online at uh, different shops for different types of seats, whether fiberglass backed, or um, the other uh, frame seats, I believe, uh, that are out there. And I decided that I wanted 
um, fiberglass back seats as opposed to the, the frame seats. And the seats that I have, uh, these Momos, were the cheapest ones that I could find that were fiberglass back seats. Mm -hmm. um, another positive was that uh, Momo has the Super Cup, which is my driver's seat, and they also have the Super Cup XL, uh, which is the passenger seat and is larger for different size passengers that I might have. Okay. And uh, did you run into any difficulties <laughs> with the installation of these seats? Oh man, I've got a long I list. Know the That's why I asked. Um, <laughs> it, it all worked out. Um, but what I did was I decided to keep the OEM slider for the driver's seat and to do floor mount for the passenger seat. Um, the driver's seat fit into the car just fine. Um, and I used brackets that fit the OEM sliders. There are two types of brackets that fit OEM sliders, and there are two types of sliders. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought that both sliders uh, were in, or uh, one type of slider was in my car. So I bought a set of sliders, didn't fit. Uh, so I bought another set, and it did fit. And what I, what I realized was that my passenger seat and my driver's seat had two different types of sliders, and I had assumed that they were the same one uh, based on the year of the model. Um, so that was the first thing that I had to overcome. Fortunately, it was just buying the right set of sliders. Installation was nice and easy. Um, but then when I got to the Super Cup XL, and uh, there are side. a few videos that I have here. And I do notice that the seat touches your door. Yep, the seat does <laughs> touch my door. So it's a big seat. Uh, one of the biggest, I believe, out there. And I didn't measure before I bought the seat. I Nor did you ask anyone sit. about and it. And I didn't ask anybody either. <laughs> I love so, you, Damon. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, the seat fits. Um, there's an indentation in my passenger side door. From when it closed, it slightly touches. Um, and I'm OK with that. Uh, some people might not be. And down here in the footwell on the center console, the seat's so wide that it will actually dig into the center console. Probably wouldn't fit. So what I did was I trimmed the center console, um, which I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't do. Uh, but to make it fit, that's what I had to do. So maybe if you can you can't give them see with, that, with your handheld camera, maybe show them where you cut into the center console. Now, so, granted, not everyone's going to want to cut into their center console. But I got to say, right Damon, you did a really nice job with the Dremel. And it, I mean, unless you look very, very closely, it, it, you, you hid sort of that cut very well so in the end you got what you wanted you got fitted you know fitted seats um it all works I, you obviously autocross with them and yep. everything worked out okay for you but um with with damon's story in mind let's let's go back to to the the desk here and uh talk about why one would want to upgrade th their seat in their car and i've got to say um upgrading to aftermarket seats especially like early cars right like um like this seat here this seat here is a 996 seat that was not this is not a this is just like a standard seat, this is right? a standard seat standard yeah. seat and they're nice and comfortable for for long roads um road trips and stuff like that but you know for performance driving you find yourself you know putting your foot on the uh, the foot rest to kind of keep your body uh, in place as you're doing performance driving and also you know the 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 aftermarket seats especially something like this here i mean this is this is a boat anchor it's i mean it's probably about 45 50 pounds whereas an aftermarket seat depending on the material this is more than yeah. 45 pounds this is Usually when I when I when I go to Southwest and I put my baggage on the scale, it definitely I don't know. Yeah, it's you pretty might heavy. need to work out a little more. <laughs> oh, he's gonna go there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. So uh, depending on the material, uh, fiberglass or carbon fiber or some type of composite, uh, aftermarket seats are typically 15 to 20 pounds. Okay, 15 to 20 pound difference. Yeah. Oh. And uh, when you were talking about you know as a driver, when do you want to start thinking about getting a seat? Is when you are in the car and you're driving your autocross time trial at HPDE when you have to think about anchoring yourself on yeah. a dead pedal and that that's actually distracting you from driving you're taking away some of your attention from driving to anchoring yourself that's when you should start thinking about yeah. getting another seat 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I noticed it as I was doing driver's education um, mm -hmm. as well as autocross. As soon as you don't have to worry about your body being in place, then mm -hmm. you're just much more comfortable and you're actually more precise with your steering, more precise with your pedal work. Uh, people talk about comfort. Now, getting in and out of a seat from, say, comparing this one to that one, yes, getting in and out of it mm -hmm. might be difficult. Some people are limber. It doesn't matter to them but i can tell you my fixed seat in my car that's similar to this one mm -hmm. once i'm in it it fits like a glove and in fact I, i'm so comfortable in it I, I i can do four hour six hour trips in the car um and it's also it's got a nice advantage of if i start to get tight in the seat then i know i need to go on a diet <laughs> <laughs> well the magic on these aftermarket seats is the high bolsters yeah. That's what keeps you in. That's yeah. what gives you the lateral support. All right. So let's talk about um, as far as, you know, where to buy, what, um, you know, you, you, I think, Damon, you just kind of went online. I guess here's, here's, here's what, what I would do is, you know, especially in the region as you go to autocross events or you go to DEs or even if you go to car Cars and Coffee and you notice someone that has a, a seat that similar to what you're considering, like I would talk to them, right? And I would also ask to sit in them. I would go to your, your local race shop, you know, your retailer to sit in them because to me, they're kind of like, say a, a motorcycle helmet, just because it's a large doesn't mean it fits you, right? Because some large motorcycle helmets fit better than others. And I think seats are the same way. Yeah, different body shapes, different shoulder widths. Uh, you know, just looking at, you know, this width here, how it's angled and how it's shaped around this area. Now, um, a good quality race tech seat, a good race seat, like such as race tech has removable cushions and you can buy optional cushions to put in different places to customize for your body. One question here from so we have the laptop so we can mm -hmm. answer the live chat questions is uh, from Chris Henley. Chris is saying, I like the look of a stock seat, but would prefer the support and comfort from a seat like this. Do seats like these come in like a leather or leather look so it has more of a stock look to it? I think some of the vendors of uh, the seats do make it like that. And those mm -hmm. are more considered to be a uh, tuner seat versus a track seat. A track seat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I would think this material is going to, you know, you want to stay put and this is going to kind of grab a hold of you better than, say, a leather. Yeah, this is an Alcantara material, okay. just like the high performance steering wheels. Gotcha, gotcha. So then the other thing about visiting someone or a, a business locally is like, like Damon said, he, he kind of shopped online, mm -hmm. bought a set of seats, and then as he went to install them, he kind of ran into hurdles. And you heard that story earlier today. And you knew exactly kind of what he was going into. So, so mm -hmm. let's kind of run with, had he come to you, what are some of the things that you would have told him? Well, my approach is a little bit different. So uh, if a customer comes in and tells me, yeah, I like this seat, I tried it in someone else's car, I said that it's somewhere and this is what I want in my car. So the first thing I would do is actually do a Google search to see if I can find a picture of that particular seat in, in that car. particular car, just to know oh, that it fits. That's a good fits. tip. Um, if I can't find a picture of it, then I would look, uh, I would refer to the manufacturer's uh, specifications because usually they tell you the maximum width of the seat. Then you would measure from inside a car from the tightest point of the door panel from one side to another mm -hmm. and subtract what the uh, approximate width is of the center console. So that gives you an idea of how much space you have to work with. Now, granted that in a multi-dimensional space like this, you can't get an exact number, but if, you know, plus or minus two inches, I think that will be close enough to know if this seat will fit the car or not without cutting anything. And, and, a, and a shop similar to, to yours at TPC, you've run a number of these cars through the shop where you've done a number of seat installations. Mm -hmm. So you probably have it in your head, a good idea of what fits, what are some, some things that he's gonna run into. Yeah, you can actually, you know, kind of cheat if you have a cookie cutter uh, installation you know, of this particular seat in this particular car. So uh, with the Racetech line, we have done a number of 4009 models and the mm -hmm. 4119 models because we know they fit the water-cooled Porsches. Okay. 
All right. Well, that's actually that's a good point. You talk about water cooled Porsche fitment versus say like the air cooled and the mm -hmm. G bodies and the F bodies. With my '87, when I went to a side mount seat, uh, the, the, my car's a cab, mm -hmm. and to, to drive a VIR, you have to have a roll bar. And there's a broomstick rule. For those of you that aren't familiar with the broomstick rule, is basically if you went from the, the top of your windshield and put a broomstick across to the top of the seat, then your your head with helmet has to be has to be below that broomstick, right? By two inches, I by believe. like two two inches or so. Mm -hmm. So with the stock seat and the 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 bar that I had in the car, that wasn't going to happen. So by going to um, an aftermarket seat with the, the side mounts, like I was able to put that seat on the floor and gain all sorts of, of, of room. Fast forward to modern water-cooled cars, that might not be the case if, you, if you're not careful. Right, because the water-cooled cars, starting from the 97 Boxster, do not have a flat floor. They sort of have a pedestal that's built underneath. It's to increase the uh, rigidity of the car. Mm. So with the this seat actually mount on top of the pedestal that's about two inches higher than the flat floor on an air cool car. Oh, wow, okay. So you have to be more careful about what you choose for sliders and side brackets and, yeah. and the seat and itself. And we'll talk about that in a yeah. bit to how to kind of cheat mm -hmm. the system to gain more. Uh, 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 real quickly, just an easy way to cheat is, I know in, in the 996, if you have a seat that sits kind of high, then you just run without this bottom seat cushion. Yeah, most people for the track, they just remove the cushion uh, when they're on the track to gain more headroom as well as uh, without the cushion, mm -hmm. you can, uh, in my opinion, you can actually feel oversteer a little bit more. A little bit more input. Uh-huh. Gotcha. Unless you have some insulation, natural <laughs> insulation, that doesn't allow you to, to feel it as well. Mm -hmm. um, so what about, I've seen people that, you know, kind of buy blindly on auction houses and, and get these seats that are very sim similar in look and shape but they're kind of a generic brand. Yeah, I think ideally to buy a seat is to buy it from an authorized dealer. So you know you're getting a genuine seat and uh, most of the high performance seats have FIA certification on it. And I have seen some knockoff seats. So yeah, uh, yeah so buying from like, you know, somebody off eBay or Amazon where they might not be an authorized dealer, you're taking a risk. So you're saying they are knockoff seats that even have like the logo of what they're knocking off of and, and trying to pass it as a real one? They look close. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. And, and of course, you're, the reason why you're doing all of this is not only for you know, better driving performance, but it's a safety yes. item, right? So don't, don't shortchange yourself and, and buy something that may look the part, but when it comes to protecting you in the safety environment, it's more than likely gonna fail, especially yeah. if it's not certified. Yeah. For right. sure. Yeah, I, I would only buy seats and seat harnesses that are FIA certified. Now what about, I know people buy used seats. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, you have to be careful there because whenever a car is in a severe enough impact, you're supposed to replace the seat and the harnesses because the harnesses are designed to stretch right. and the seat might flex in a certain way doing that particular impact. So th the seat might be weakened or um, have so a stress, stress crack, crack that you, crack can't, that you right. can't see. So basically, you know, the seat or the harnesses could be trauma, Yeah, and you don't know that. Right, right. And, and oftentimes I wonder why people have used race seats available for sale, right? Like what happened there? And I'm thinking maybe it's because they had an on-track incident and now they're parting out a car. Well, um, race seats have an expiration date. If you're actually racing the car in a racing series, oh, like in, five in years, PCA Club Racing, yeah, you're okay. supposed to change it. But for um, you know, most of the uh, HPEs, they don't typically check. And okay. hey, I, I bought a U seat for my sim. Yeah, for your sim racing, exactly. Uh -huh. That's perfect, perfect use for that. So, let's talk about what to buy. Um, you've decided that. Now, um, but before we go into that, let's talk about stock seats. So we talked about this stock 996 seat that offers very minimal support and for advanced driving, it's, you know, it's, it's not that great. But then they have a sport version of this. And even in the, the newer cars, they have bucket seats, mm -hmm. right, that are also, you know, fantastic seats. They're a lot of money. 
um, but they're still not like full on receipts. They're not. Yeah. They are not, but uh, you know, they're, they're a good compromise mm -hmm. because it comes with a car, it's considered stock, mm -hmm. and they have airbags in them. Yeah. Oh, right. Exactly. So there's a kind of a DOT compliance part of that. Yes. Right. Okay. Now, um, you've made the decision to go to an aftermarket seat. One of the things that you need to know about, and I think we have a slide, especially if you're going to use it for PCA's driver's education, and we're talking about having equal restraints on both sides of the car. You want to talk a little bit about that? or? Uh, yeah, so you're supposed to have uh, equal restraint for the driver and the passenger. So if one, the driver has a six-point harness, so therefore the passenger must have the same. And also seat-wise, too. Seat you can't have like one fixed seat and the driver and then a stock seat in the passenger. They have to be equal. Correct. Uh, yeah, because th at that point, the instructor can decline the ride because he doesn't have the same the safety, same, same safety protection. Gear. So, again, when you've made the decision to move to this, like, no, unless you're just going to autocross or unless you've been signed off where you're a solo driver in PCA's driver's education, you're going to be investing in two seats as, as Damon did. Yes. Okay. All right. So you decide. Plus it looks good when you have two race seats. It's I don't know. I kind of like the whole, beauty. I kind of like the whole one seat too, because then okay. it's like, that means I can drive by myself on the track. <laughs> no, I'm <Sure>. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what else is there to look for when you go to buy one of these seats? Damon just bought it off the internet. He didn't even sit in one. So I would say, first off, you got to sit in it and make sure it fits. Yeah, definitely go to a track event and ask people to, you know, th they'll let you sit in their car. Uh, because those, all the seats, you know, I'm sure they're all high quality, but they're made slightly different in the way they're angled from one mm -hmm. model to another and even from one manufacturer to another. You have to find one that best fits your body. Sit in the car for at least five minutes because sitting in it for like 30 seconds doesn't tell you anything because you might get a cramp after two or three mm -hmm. minutes that won't occur in half a minute. Yeah. So he was talking about these, uh, the mounts on his car and how they were different. Um, you know, again, had he come to you, what mounts sh did he need? And he ran into a problem, Damon, I think you mentioned, where the one, the, your passenger seat sits higher for some reason. The yeah, I was considering sliders for both seats. Um, ended up going floor mount for the passenger uh, because I couldn't figure out what was up with my sliders. And it turned out that they were different for the passenger and the uh, driver. And I didn't want to buy two sliders, you know, aftermarket or, or brackets for them. So I decided just to go with the slider, OEM slider with aftermarket brackets for the driver. Yeah, I've come across this before. Uh, they come to realize that the OEM sliders, they're different from the driver side to the passenger side because they are shaped to the bottom of each seat, which is different for the OEM, for the driver and the passenger because they put um, occupancy sensors and airbags in different places between the driver and the passenger seat. So that's why they're different. So uh, when we install seats, we typically go with a set of aftermarket s sliders because okay. they're flat and they're going to give you the uh, most Hold amount of headroom right yeah. here. Yes, here's a slider right here already bolted up to the side mount bracket. And so you're saying the factory one, you can't sit, it's not as thin as this or? Um, it, it's a little bit thicker, but it's not just that. It's oddly shaped oh. to clear, you know, all the electronics, airbags, and sensors That's underneath, underneath the OEM some. seat. Okay. Gotcha. All the stuff down here. Yeah, okay. yeah. Wiring harnesses, electric yeah. motors, and everything else. Right. Ah, I see. So, yeah, so this is actually not the most modern seat. When you move into like a 981 mm -hmm. or 987 seat, there's a lot more, a lot stuff, more stuff going on. Yeah. Okay. So when you have like 14-way, 18-way, that's lots of stuff down there to yeah. control all that, right? So I have a quick question for you. If you mm -hmm. go to, so this is for out of a 99, mm -hmm. no airbags on this seat. Um, the sensor for the airbag and... Um, you know, seatbelt stuff was, it's separate on the side here. Mm -hmm. So you just take it off and put it on your, your aftermarket seat. Mm -hmm. Tell us what it's more, it's way more involved with the modern car because now you've got airbags in the chairs and that's, that's something for 
people to really consider when they're going down this road? Yeah, so what you have to know is by swapping out the, a late model factory seat that has airbags in the seat to an aftermarket seat is uh, you, you will get a warning light on a dash saying that the, you know, indicating the airbag is offline. But now you're doing this intentionally, but still there will be a warning light, which, uh, you know, you can cancel out. Yeah. So I actually have that warning light. Mm -hmm. um, can you get rid of it or does it just stay on for eternity? Uh, the airbag light on the dash, uh, there are some people who have been successful coding it. I've tried it a lot of different ways. I haven't been successful with it. So um, to give you an idea on my personal card, my 997 that I did the race seats on, uh, I just put a piece of uh, black electrical tape over it. <laughs> I cut it out to that nice little triangle and put it in there. It looks factory. <laughs> it looks fa factory 3M tape. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. That, that's, that's something seriously mm -hmm. to consider because yeah. if you have an earlier car that, again, you don't have airbags tied in your seat or you have a G body or an F body car, I guess a pretty, I wouldn't say simple, mm -hmm. but you can take the old seat out, put the new seat in, put all the seat belt brackets and stuff like that, and away you go in your car dash doesn't light up and mm -hmm. all that stuff and and so if you're doing it in a later car not only are you worried about the airbag but having a professional or if you're a DIY or a serious DIYer you have to be really really careful because you are dealing with the airbag system and you don't want to have it accidentally deployed while you're wrenching on on your seat or your bolts and all that kind of stuff yeah you would want it can to be dangerous yes you have to disconnect your battery that's the first thing you have to do yeah yeah. yeah, so you want to set up, don't want to set up any of the airbags. And if there are, you know, going back to that topic, um, there are companies out there that sell resistors that you can plug in mm -hmm. that basically to fool the system thinking that, uh, you know, the airbag is, is still in, in line. Okay. So to keep it, the light from coming on, but you have to know that, you know, and you have to accept the risk that you're bypassing a system. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, Talk about features I mean, when you're when you're going to buy a seat. Like I, I noticed on this tag here on this race tech seat, um, the seat that's actually on the tag is the the probably the full on race version, which has the the head restraints, mm -hmm. and then it also has like a ventilation piece that goes through. Now I would assume the the, the one with the head restraint or the halo, as I call it, that's not something you want to put on a street car. Uh, typically, no, but if you are serious enough about track driving and you're willing to, uh, you know, put up with it being part of your blind spot, then yeah. yeah, you know, I've seen people do it. And so it just depends on, uh, you know, what you're willing to put up with. So, yeah. now, in my opinion, if you're using this car 90% on the street, then I would not go with the uh, head restraints. You know, mm -hmm. in the race tech line, they have the HR suffix, that means head restraint. So when it does, okay. this seat here is a model 4009. So if it's a 4009 HR, that means it would have had the uh, head restraint on it. But anyway, um, I mean, if you're using your car 80% for track and 20% of streets, so basically only drive the car to and from the track, right. then yeah, then, then you might want to consider it. Okay, I got you. So for those people that aren't familiar with race seats, when you talk about harnesses, you talk about four point, five point, six point, and if you just look at this initially, you're like one, two, three holes, four holes, that's four, and then I see a fifth hole here, then how does six point work? Uh, fifth and six go through this same slot here. Okay. So I believe there is uh, a picture of it that, uh, Robert, could you pick up the picture of the uh, six point harness? how it's mounted to the floor, the fifth and sixth. So while he's pulling up that mm -hmm. picture, when you do a, um, a, this is what's called the sub belt harness? Sub belt, yes. Is there a special, oh, is that what you're talking about? Yes, yeah, so fifth and sixth, it actually, oh. well, it was Can the previous back, picture, yep. There you go. Yeah, so it all goes, the, the fifth and sixth, actually uh -huh. it's connected to the buckle itself. Okay, so are those eye bolts actually in the, the chassis of the car that I'm looking at? Yeah, that was my old car. So I put eye bolts and okay. big washers underneath of it. Okay, gotcha. Nice. But I, as you can say, that floor is not flat. It's got all no, sorts of stuff underneath. No, it. no, it's not. Th those were the pedestals that we were talking about. Okay. Uh, see how they're raised by about two some inches? Yeah. 
and the uh, mounting points are definitely not flat. Okay. All right. Um, so with side mounts, in my experience, the side mounts enable you to get the seat as low as possible, mm -hmm. again, to gain headroom with helmets and, and meet all sorts of broomstick rule requirements. They also make seats that only mount at the bottom. Is that a good thing or is that something you don't often use? Uh, I think the uh, uh, bottom mounts are more of a touring seat because your motorsport seats are going to have a uh, side mount because it gives the car more adjustments. Yeah. And there's actually a greater contact surface. Okay. Versus just the four bolt inserts that are, uh, you know, made it to the bottom of the composite. Okay. So before we talk about the installation and the different types of brackets, we uh, did have a question about should you keep your stock seats so that you can go to sell it, this, that, and the other. And I think that's an easy, easy answer. It's a yes, you always keep the stock stuff so you can return to the stock and let the next owner decide if they want to keep it as a race car or, or driver's ed. Yeah, I should have done that with my 997 GT3. I could have gotten 10 more K for it if I kept the stock seats. No, but I sold my stock seats because I needed the money. You needed the money. We, yeah. We've all done it. I yeah. sold my stock seats on my 87 so I can afford to get my aftermarket seats. Uh -huh. And now I'm going, oh, so. silly, silly, silly. So, but if you can, so keep if the stock seats. If you have the means to keep your stock yeah. seats, please keep your stock seats because you'll be much better off in the long run. Now here's, here's one for you that, I don't know if you have to dance around, but mm -hmm. you know, Jack Beckman asks, are there legal issues with swapping seats and anything to prevent you from registering it for the street? So before you answer that, usually when you do these seat swaps, you have already registered your car. It's already your car and it's in your name and you're driving it and blah, 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 and you're doing the swap. So I think that answers the second part of it. But the legal side of swapping seats? I think there's a number of levels to that. And uh, the local and state level, um, there are, you know, some, some counties and states have inspections. You know, they could be a biannual or an annual inspection. Mm -hmm. And uh, depending on how it's written for that county or state, it might not allow aftermarket seats. Yeah. So I, I have heard, I think, Virginia, maybe. Okay. Yeah, because I heard heard of some people who actually they have to keep their sock seats. So okay. once a year or whatever the time frame. So that's is, that's a good they swap. It going out. back to yeah. whether or not you should keep your stock seats. Like uh -huh. if you have an annual inspection and they don't allow for seats aftermarket seats, and that's the time to throw your yep. factory seats back in. Yep. Now on a federal level. Um, you're not supposed to disable the airbag. So if your seats have airbags and you take them out, then technically, then, yeah, then you assume the risk. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Um, I think we have winners for the raffle. So Robert, you want to throw that on there. So congratulations to Jeff Hornick from Oregon region for winning the Metrovac vacuum and Thomas, uh, congratulations. We'll send you the sports car together fest poster and the official water bottle. So let's move on to now you've got your seat, you've chosen it, mounting it. And we already talked about side mounts and there are various numbers of side mounts available from, um, you know, here's the one from Race Tech. I know there's you know, other groups out there that you know, make uh, mounts, all different size holes. Any, any, anything you wanna share about that? Yeah, um, Robert, could you bring up uh, the different images of uh, the side mounts? And I'm going to plug one of one of our great mm -hmm. sponsors, Bray mm -hmm. uh, When I did my seat in the 996, you know, they had a very specific mount for my car, and everything lined up nicely. So he, you know, Dam I'm, I'm pointing at Damon, always throwing Damon mm -hmm. under the bus. Damon did his research, but I actually spoke to a live person at Break Cross and I really appreciated that because I knew exactly what I was getting into and mine fit perfectly, Damon. <laughs> hey, I ended up uh, speaking to people at Break Cross as well to oh. help me fix my mistake. And, then, <laughs> and, and uh, yeah. so, so thanks again to our folks at, uh, at Break Cross. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, sorry no, 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 Break Cross is great. They, they have a number of uh, products that is for specific adaptations. So let's say if you have like a, for example, a 997 GT2 that has a factory bucket seats in it mm -hmm. and uh, you know, you want uh, to adapt um, 
sub belts onto it because the original seat didn't have the provisions for that. So you know, this is just an example. Yeah. So they make, they make a bolt on solution for all of these unique Porsche applications, which is really nice. So you don't have to drill any holes in your 200K plus absolutely, car. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think we had some Robert, yes. So, so talk about some of the different um, mounts that we're looking at here. Yeah, so this is a pretty normal looking side mount. Uh, so as you can see at the bottom there, it has a 90 degree right angle. Now there are a lot of different ones um, with, uh, you know, some of them look very intimidating because they have a lot of holes in it. Robert, you want to bring us? Yeah, so that's a pretty extreme one. So don't let something like this intimidate you because you're only going to use two different holes. So one for the front and one for the back for each side. And um, so now this one that uh, Robert's showing here, now this one is worth, is notable because if you look at the bottom, is not a 90 degree right angle like all the other ones. So this is an, what is known as an offset bracket. Mm. So if you happen to have a seat that is uh, 410 millimeters wide at the mounting point, and the uh, bolt holes on the floor happens to be exactly the same at 410, so therefore you cannot use the regular right angle mount. You have to use these offset, oh, which okay. you see, see that little yep. kick out there. So yep. if it happens to be exactly the same distance, that gives you the space to you know, put your bolt through. Oh, smart. Now sometimes, uh, depending on how wide the seat is, and how wide the center console is, you might have to buy multiple sets of brackets and mix and match them. So you oh. might have to have offset on one and uh, uh, upright on the other. I've done that and I even have to make spacers to fill the gaps. Oh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. So we talked about sliders earlier. Um, sliders lets you move the seat fore and aft. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, are there anything else that, like, I, in, in, my, in my 87, I have, I just mounted the, the side mounts directly to the, the floor, so my seats don't, don't go back and forth. Yeah, so the earlier cars, the air cool cars, have pretty much a flat floor, mm -hmm. so you can take the side bracket and just bolt them right to the floor, and, yeah. you know, on the side bracket here, you know, if the holes don't happen to match, you can drill more holes, just to bolt it down to the floor is not a big deal. It's just an angled piece of metal. Yeah. But on the newer cars, uh, cars that uh, now that you know we're uh, really putting more seats in them because we're at this point in time we're not converting air-cooled cars to race cars right, anymore. Right, right, right. If, if anything, we're converting them back to street because they're worth more money. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Again, those seats I should have saved. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. The the more popular applications is the water-cooled Porsches, which. Um, Robert, could you bring up the picture of the floor that has the uh, measurements on it? So this is actually the uh, seat measurement. So this is uh, off of Racetech's website. So it's a different picture than, yeah, so there you go. Um, yeah, so if you look closely, I don't know if you can see the number there. So this is a 991, so the floor is definitely not flat oh, you can yeah, see like you know the, about the two inches of pedestal there and uh, for all of these water cool Porsches the uh, bolt spacing from side to side is 410 millimeters which is why I was using that reference earlier ah, the 410 okay, gotcha yeah so uh, yeah could you show the picture of uh, from the race tech website that shows the dimensions so being that from the 1997 Boxster all the way to today, it's 410 millimeters. Mm. Um, you can take a look at this particular seat here and look at those measurements. I circled it in red. Um, so for Racetech, there are actually four different sizes for the 4119 model, which is really nice, you know, for uh, guys who are, you know, for drivers who are thinner versus thicker, taller. So, um, yeah, so all four, they publish the uh, mounting width. So I converted from inches to millimeters. As you can see, you know, they're pretty close to 410 millimeters. So if you're working with one, on the first one that has a 399 millimeter spacing there, you're going to have to uh, use the um, 90 degree uh, brackets, the, the upright angle, on an outward setting. Uh -huh. So, you know, where uh, it'll yeah. be like this. Right. So, whereas if you're working a wider seat, you would actually want to flip these around to go inward. Gotcha. So, it's inward or 
or outward, outward mm -hmm. depending on the width for your seat. Gotcha. So talking, we talked a little bit about the sliders. Do you normally recommend going with an aftermarket slider so that you can gain the maximum, you know, ability to drop your seat? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the OEM sliders have the really nice and cool handle on it. You know, you pull up and you slide back and forth. So right. I think that's the only positive attribute yeah. about it. You know, right? Yeah, for, for most this most aftermarket one is just like a kind of a flimsy bar. That yeah, they just give you a bar. It give you a bar, right? uh huh. And and, 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 and since the seat width is different, you often have to bend the bar to make it fit. So oh, I think right. that's why they made it flimsy or soft metal for that matter, so that you. you can actually bend it to fit the width because they're universal. Oh. Yeah, so uh, the aftermarket sliders, uh, I think, would be a better choice for uh, aftermarket seats because they are easier to work with in that they're thinner mm -hmm. and uh, they're. Uh, they will fit basically all models of uh, side mounts. Okay. Now, when you set up the seat, obviously when they go performance driving, they're going to go with mm -hmm. a their 5.6 point harness. Mm -hmm. But are you able to also retain their three point factory seat belt and make it work with a seat like this? Yes, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's definitely possible. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, the, on the uh, lap belt, mm -hmm. so the, if, if, we're, if we're talking about a driver's seat here, the lap belt, uh, you have two options. Uh, if, if, it's a, uh, if you have a side mount that has the provisions for the uh, lap belt, then that's great, then it just bolts on there. And what you can do is you can get a longer bolt, so you can uh, put the uh, factory belt and the uh, Race yeah. harness, yeah. So basically, just sandwich double, it. double up. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure that um, it's not a rigid mount because the um, pivot points are supposed to be able to pivot. Oh, okay, gotcha. So you don't pinch the belt. Ah, okay. But that way, when they're driving on the street, they can use a simple three-point, get in and out of the car, mm -hmm. and then when they go track, they can throw on. Yeah, yeah. On this side here, uh, you're gonna have to buy a longer buckle. Because feed, the, yeah, the, yeah, because the OEM buckle would just come to about here. You won't be able to reach down and okay. get it. So, but the longer ones are available. So, so they would just like the OEM bucket seats. They have a buckle that's about like this long. Ah, uh, it goes reach down into there. Okay, gotcha. We have a question from Gojo two forty four, and I'm not even sure I know what this means. But he says, "Can you have a containment seat in a road car? What's a containment seat? This." Oh, okay. So, uh, um, so the answer is yes. Yes. Yes, but then you have to understand what it means to have a seat like that in your car, the legalities of it, mm -hmm. and the things that you're going to have to do to make it fit into your car. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Let's see, how do you set up the seat in terms of, you were talking about there's really only going to be two holes that are going to be used on uh, each side to mount the seat. Like, how do you... How much do you rake? How much? How high? How low? Like when you when you fit your customer, where do you start, and how do you know it's comfortable for them? Uh, we always start with a slight tilt because remember when you put your helmet on, okay, your helmet's going to tick up about two or three inches. So if tilt you, back. Tilt, yeah. Tilt back. Okay. Tilt gotcha. back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you were to set up the seat so it's comfortable without the helmet, so once you put your helmet on, then you're going to realize that it's going to want to push your head forward. Oh, right, because you're going to have a couple inches worth of helmet. Yeah, so typically, you know, if a, a customer comes in, you know, didn't bring the helmet, want us to adjust the seat form, I would just say put your fist behind your head because that will represent mm -hmm. the thickness of the helmet. Okay. All right, so now you've got your seat mounted to your uh, side mounts, they're mounted to the floor, you've got sliders, you can hop in, but you're mm -hmm. still not, I mean, I guess if you have the three point harness there, you're ready. To drive it on the street but on the track you still have to think about how you're mounting those five to six point harnesses and then also head and neck restraint uh, mm -hmm. systems and how do you integrate all that into yeah so with the shoulder belt you'll need either a harness bar or a roll bar um, depending on the car that you're working with. What's the with, difference? A harness bar basically is as the name implies, is just a horizontal bar that bolts up. That's to, what uh, Damon. Damon, yeah. isn't that what you have in your car? 
it just is, a harness I'm bar? I'm at it right now. Okay, yep. so in your car, the harness bar, it's just two points of connection, one on either side, and it's a horizontal bar going across. Yep. And then you fed your, your um, belts around that bar mm -hmm. as the fixed point. Yep, so the row bar has uh, a similar bar. Hoop. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it has the, uh, it contains that horizontal bar for the belt, mm -hmm. but it also has a main hoop that provides rollover protection. Okay, gotcha. So that's the belts for your body, but then now you also have the, the head and neck restraint systems on helmets. How do those mount? Uh, the, the two, there are two types uh, that I'm aware of. There's the Hans device, uh, which has a, uh, an adapter. It looks like a wishbone. It goes around your neck, mm -hmm. so as you tighten down on your shoulder belt, uh, it forms, uh, um, you know, it, it pulls down on this wishbone shape um, Oh, so that's platform. the base. Right, that's the base. And then there are tethers from this platform that hooks up to your helmet. So the idea is uh, if you're in an impact, if there's enough forward G-force, the tethers will prevent the helmet and the head from going forward so that your neck doesn't get overextended. Yeah. Now there's another type, I believe it's called a hybrid system. Mm -hmm. I personally don't have a lot of experience with that system because it's relatively new. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of using this wishbone device that gets strapped down by the shoulder belt, it actually, it, it's like a harness. Uh, you know, it's like wearing a backpack. It uses your upper body to anchor so that you don't get overextension. So is that from, I mean, we've heard a lot about those types of systems after like the Earnhardt incident, right? Yes. Like keeping your, mm -hmm. your noggin kind of in place in a moment of impact. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you've seen a lot of cars come through your shop where they've had things installed perhaps incorrectly and care to share some, some of the stuff that you've seen? Yeah. Um, ideally, you want to avoid uh, having a seat that's so wide when you shut the door it pinches the seat. <laughs> you, you mean the one like, like Damon's car on the passenger side that hits the door panel? Yeah, sorry, Damon. <laughs> it's all good. I mean, he can always take off the door panel and then it won't hit. So now he, he already took out all the panels in the back. See, he's, to, he's again, if I, if I didn't mm -hmm. say it earlier, he's trying to, you know, gap me by mm -hmm. another half a second. So he keeps removing stuff off of mm -hmm. his car. So suggesting that he removes a door panel off his car, he'll mm -hmm. do it. He'll absolutely do it. Yep, and then when you're piecing these parts, you have to buy all the nuts and bolts and uh, make sure you get bolts, metric bolts that are at least 8.8 .8 grade or higher. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're, say for example, if you're trying to get this done and you don't have the right bolt, you go to your local hardware store, you might oh. not get an automotive grade bolt. You might get like a furniture grade bolt, which is, it's gonna so snap So for those off. of you that don't know, a quality hardware store will have metric as well as stainless and as well as 8.8 mm -hmm. .8. and when you look at the head of that bolt it'll literally say 8.8 .8. yeah, so, yeah. so 8.8 10.9 or 12.9 so anything above 8.8 .8 would be ideal okay so Damon now that you've had that system in your car tell us a little bit about your experience and you happy I'm very happy. Um, fortunately, the seat, uh, the driver's seat is really comfortable. Um, I've driven to Parade in French Lick, you know, tw 10 to 12 hour drive and I was fine. Um, it's not quite as comfortable as a stock seat. That being said, um, I've sat in less comfortable seats before. So, uh, uh, and at autocross, uh, it definitely hugs me and keeps me very snug in the seat. So uh, almost to the point where I wouldn't recommend this, but you could almost take your seat belt off and you wouldn't move mm. unless you're you know, standing yeah. on the brakes. So, so I'm very happy with it. So I'm glad it worked out for you. And I think we have a number of different seats that we can throw up on the mm -hmm. screen. And maybe we can just ask Tom to comment on each of them, either what type of seat it is or, yeah. So what are we looking at here? Uh, this looks like an OEM seat for 997s, and some of the European first year model 991s have this type of seat. Now this sports seat, oh, can you go back Robert? So this sports seat, one of the things that people don't think about is that will recline or tilt back, but it won't tilt forward, right? Because there's nowhere, nowhere for the bolsters to go, I don't think. It, it, this one doesn't tilt at all. Right. And so that, that brings, before you go to the next seat, 
is another consideration. So Damon's car doesn't have back seats or rear mm -hmm. cargo area where he has to worry about getting back there. I know he never cleans the rear window, so that's not a consideration for him. <laughs> but for those of you that have a 911, I don't clean much on this car. I'm sorry, it's been a while. <laughs> I've had all this stored up making fun of Damon. I apologize, Damon. But if you're gonna put a seat like this in your car and you have rear seats or you utilize that cargo area in the back, just know it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to, one, you're probably not gonna to wanna to put a kid back there because you're not gonna be able to get them out in an emergency, but also putting bags, or if you're going to a Concorde and you do need to clean that rear window, having seats like this will prevent you to getting easy access to the rear. Yeah, just well, if you do a seat like this, most likely you're gonna do a six point or five point. Right, harness. oh yeah, absolutely. So since you have a harness bar back here, you don't wanna have any occupants uh, back there absolutely. anyway. That's right, that's right. So about the only thing you could put back there is uh, your gym you know, bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know your backpack with whatever you need to go to the track and a small tool bag. Yeah. All right, Robert. So you can keep going to the next seat. So that's a seat similar to Damon's, single piece, fiberglass backed. Um, now I know they put this in as a joke because they thought this would. <laughs> this is a seat that they think I would put into my 996. No, keep going. Quality <laughs> seats, people. Now I've seen these seats before. These look hardcore. Tell me a little about these. Are Kirky seats or like I've seen them in like um, midget cars spec and Miatas, spec Miatas, and they just. I mean, I guess they look the performance look, but that does not look comfortable at all. Uh, frankly, I have no experience with this type of. Seat. Oh really? No. Yeah, I've, I've seen them out there and I've seen some legit race cars with them, but I know you're not sitting in that for comfort for a long period of time, unless you have natural cushion on your body. <laughs> Next, please. Okay, so this is the race tech. This is the, the race seat that we were talking about with the halos. And um, we wanted to show this picture because that, that sort of outlet thing at the bottom, that's where you would connect air. Yeah, that's for a cooling system. Cooling system. Yeah, okay. so you know when you're driving 100 degree heat. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to have the cold air blowing through there, and then further, yep, right there, and then uh, further up on the seat, you see that horizontal bridge there. Yeah. So this seat can be solidly oh. mounted to uh, the uh, to uh, to the roll cage, so to make the seat even more rigid, so the top of it doesn't flex. Oh, so that's, I didn't, a, so that's so, another great feature of this seat. So that's neat because I, I've seen seats where they have like a almost like a like a T adjustable T mm -hmm. that kind of butts up to the back of the seat. To, I always thought that was for not letting the seat back flex, but this one here you can actually hard mount it. Yeah, hmm, I haven't yeah. seen that before. Uh, that little sticker is important. Go back to that little sticker on the side there. That's a SFI. Yep. And also the what the date? Yep, that's that uh, should be uh, the model number and the expiration date. Now sometimes they have a manufacturing date instead of a expiration date, so you just have to count the number of years. Okay, gotcha. Next, please. Now this looks like a street kind of. This is a two-piece. Yeah. This is more of a touring seat. I wouldn't yeah, say this exactly. is exactly. Uh, uh -huh. But the pie bolsters are nice. It'll do something. Yeah. So that's more aggressive than say these factory seats, but that is a two-piece seat that more for touring. You can actually articulate it like a regular seat, mm -hmm. but it has no it has no holes. For no the harnesses. holes. So you couldn't use that with harnesses. Correct. So this is so yeah, keep exactly. that in mind if you're going like with, you said, it's a touring seat. seat. Touring seat. Okay. And that's another race seat or what they call it containment seat technical term yeah is containment seat because okay. of all these boasters okay a little bit more so folks there you have it we're almost at the top of the hour i do have a couple of announcements um, for those of you that might happen to be in the southern california area november 14th we have a uh, new event called unstock I think they just brought it up there. And what the show is all about is we're going to be bringing together PCA's members' cars that are not just your, um, how would you say, They're, they will all be modified cars. So modified cars that PCA members own, we're going to put the spotlight on modified cars. And it could be a car similar to this Gunther Works because it's going to be held at Gunther Works uh, headquarters in Huntington Beach. Registration is open. Uh, I think we're uh, almost sold out. So if you want to display your car, display your modified car, 
register. It's free. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have music, DJ, food trucks, graffiti artists, and all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, you don't want to miss it. Now, if you don't have a modified Porsche, uh, you're still obviously welcome to come. No tickets, no registration needed. Just show up. The only reason you would register is if you want to display your modified Porsche. And then our next Tech Tactics Live will be October 20th. And it's, believe it or not, been a year since we did our market update with Nathan Mers, one of our favorites on Tech Tactics Live. Nathan's going to come back and give us a 2021 market update. So with that, I say farewell to everyone. Stay safe. We'll catch you at the next one. Tom, thank you very much for coming out. It's My always pleasure. a pleasure. Thank you. Take care, everyone. See you next time.